how did you guys decide 25 was a perfect square? Okay, so the factors are the same, right? And we know that it's a square five and that's 25. Right? Watch this, this is amazing. So one half A and one half one half A. Okay, I'll never ask you this. Well, I probably will later in life, but not right now. What's root five times root five? Because that's like saying root five times by root five is the same thing as saying root five squared. Does the square root of the square root? So what's left? That's the third square. So you can make any number a perfect square. But I'm going to leave it as root 5. I'm not going to figure out what the decimal about it. So that's kind of using our bribe. I won't ask you one of these, but I just want to show you that it works out. Okay? So, so I guess we're really going to show it something down here, right? Um, okay, so the example of is ugly, but it's very doable. Is 49 a perfect square? Yeah. 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 Is the back end of a 3x minus 4x squared? Is that a perfect square? Yeah. Yes, it is. And it's either subtracted, it's there. So it meets all the criteria. So my first bracket is going to be 7. Second bracket will be 7. One will be add. So what is the square root of this one? Okay. So 3x minus 4y. Are you going to be upset if I put those in little brackets? Makes a difference when we get here. Right, so the square root is going to cancel out that root five. So now we're looking at, like, it's pretty obvious 25 squared, this is 49. This is like the obvious perfect square. Now we're getting into things that aren't so obvious. So, like, I took your knowledge from grade 10, and now we're kind of switching it so it looks a little bit different. Uh, we're looking at things that normally we just consider to be perfect squares, but they actually are. So, this would be 7 plus. 3x minus 4y. Can I simplify that any more than that? No, there's nothing I can do there. And this one's going to be 7 minus 3x, but this one will be plus 4y because I distributed that negative throughout the bracket. How many of you are going to try when you get this one to this Okay, okay. There is a question in your assignment like this. No. Okay, I don't know for sure. I'm pretty sure, like 90% sure, but it's Tuesday and I thought we were going to have a lockdown today and that didn't work out, so I'm not sure of anything. Okay, example six. Is x is 8.4 a perfect square? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so I've got x squared and an x squared. I just did this with my grade sounds and their mind was blown. They were very upset with me. Uh, 16 is, so subtract 4, plus 4. Okay, so this one I keep going with. Okay, stop there. X minus 2, X plus 2, but I can't forget this one. It's got to be listed.
So now what we're going to put it into a word problem. And there was a word problem on your problem set, that's the first one. And it is a super easy question to do, but requires a little instruction and one person only has time to do both. So instruction. So I'm saying it's instruction. So if you're struggling on the one, that's pretty common. Um, okay, so I have given you, I have given you this magical, magical, magical equation. It's from it to do the the direction. Need momentum. Um, the eight is behind which, so this is a water slide, right? So the idea is, is that when you leave the water slide, you're going to go up into the air, and then you're eventually going to come back down into the water. So assuming this is your water slide, this is you. You're going to fly off and go in a parabolic, so that's a parabola, a parabolic trajectory. So you're going to follow a parabola path. So you're going to go up in the air, and then guess what? You're going to come down. Right? Gravity is going to work. Hopefully, you're going to hit the water, not concrete, so mm -hmm. be, and that's done. Um, so, where H is the height above the surface of the pool, B is the horizontal distance. This is how high you fly. And this is how far you go. Does that make sense? So height is about how far you're like above the water. So how high you fly, and then B is how far you go. Um, how far does the slider travel before entering the water? So based on my beautiful picture here, what am I looking for? I'm looking for my next intercept. Now, this is modeling a situation. So we know we're looking for an x-intercept. We know that this parabola is going to have an x-intercept in the negative as well, or at zero. I'm not 100% sure. But this is, again, theoretical. Um, so we're not looking for this one. Which one are we looking for? So if I get like a negative 0.5, I would reject that one because of the situation we're in. You're not going to come off the slide and then zip back behind it into the I don't know how that will work. Like that's just not reasonable. So the one we're looking for is this one. What do you know about this graph? Which way does it always down? So when I look at this, has anybody shocked to see a negative constant here? You shouldn't be, right? Chances are you're not gonna fly like hit your butt's gonna hit the water and then you're gonna skip off that and fly into the sky when leaving uh what is it like it's too magic. Um, that's that. Okay, so if I'm solving for an x intercept, so this is all this is asking me to do solve for x intercept. So that's what it's asking me to do. Why do you think it's asking me to do that? It's never going to ask you to do that straight up. You need to know what it is that you're looking for. So we know that we enter the water. What's the height? Zero. Zero. So what's going to get replaced? This whole thing, this HT gets replaced with zero. And that makes sense if we're solving for an x intercept. It's actually not an x intercept. What is it? It's a d intercept. Because that axis is not labeled x, it's labeled d. But you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying, right? We're <laughs> just semantics. Um, Thinking that she thinks that that's not a perfect square, and that's definitely not a perfect square, and she is definitely not a perfect square. So, how are we going to do it? Mm, yeah, we could totally do that, but I'm going to do something that's going to make it a lot of a lot simpler. My phone's back in. Taking it a negative one six, so that leaves me with a d squared. Oh, d squared um, so that's going to leave me with, if I take a one six out of here, what does that leave me with? Positive d. Now, this is where it's all I know the answer is, I know it's going to be 12. Because really, when we call it factor, we're just dividing with that coefficient. So somewhere over here, 2, a positive 2 is going to be divided by a negative 1, 
except we don't divide fractions when we do. Times by the reciprocal of fancy words. And that's going to give me my negative 12. Isn't that way easier to factor now? Because if I had taken that negative one six and times it by two, I would have got a negative one third, and I have no desire to try to factor things in fractions. Okay. Uh, so what are the factors of negative twelve that add up to a positive one? Okay. Okay, I'm doing the complex factors, and you guys are like, why are you doing that crazy way? I can just put them in two by two, and I have no problem with that. If you want to jump right to the factors, I have absolutely no problem with that. Um, but I'm just going to do it the complex way. So if you do complex factor, you can factor anything. So I got zero, negative one six, and I'm looking at these two. What am I common factoring out? D. So I'm left with D plus four. Now I'm going to look at these two. What am I common factoring out? Negative three. Negative three. What? Uh, negative three. And I'm left with B plus four. And again, I know I've got it right because these two things are the exact same. Okay, blue is upper right. That's another thing that was brought up, me being the intuitive. If I open a bracket here, I have to make sure I close it. You know what made me really good at that is using my technology, using my graphing system. Um, okay, so zero equals negative one six. I got b plus four, b minus three. So if I solve for my variables, so I said each factor equal to zero. Do I need to set the negative one to six equal to zero? We talked about this yesterday. We don't need to do that. So I'm going to have D equals a negative 4 and D equals a positive 3. Which one do I care about? Positive 3. So you need to indicate that this is the correct answer. And 3 what? 3 C. Are you sure? Yes. Positive? So when you launch off the water slide, you're going to go up into the air, and you're going to enter the water three feet away from where you left the water slide. Does that make sense? I don't need this answer. If you left this question as here and here, I'm going to deduct the full mark because that shows me a concept there. That shows you that you don't understand that one of these actually doesn't exist in this scenario. Okay, okay, okay. And you need units of measure. Like when I was asking for the dimensions of the pen, of the mass of an area of pen. And you guys give me 75, 75 what? 75 centimeters? Oh, I have a question for you about this. Bill was far and true. Um, what does the y intercept represent? Why is it that? So this is you. Remember, this is you on your slide. And this would be at 0 and 2, right? You guys can see that that's my y intercept. Because this is under 4, and I can see that that's my y intercept. You can see, what does that represent? It's the height of the slide, right? Like, so the height of the slide is 2 meters, 2 feet above water level. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to ask you that question on a test. Okay, you need to be emotionally prepared for that. I'm going to ask you to explain what it represents, not where it is, but what does it represent. Okay, so explain means you're going to tell me in words. Not super fun, but uh, it's what we do. All right, ping pong champion of the world. It's very hard to find a picture of ping pong people, but I'm very pleased with the one I found. 
Um, the area of a rectangular ping pong table is 45 people squared. Okay, so it's a rectangular ping pong table. I'll oh, draw a picture of that for you one. And the area is 45 feet squared. So the inside has a nice area measurement of 45. The length is four more than the width. So these are like the questions where you're talking numbers, they add up for the product of the minimum, and the numbers you know, like the number of things to solve. Right, stop asking these questions. Um, okay, so do we know what the width is? <laughs> Shall we call it W? Are you guys com comfortable with that? Okay, so the length is four feet more than the width. So, what's an algebraic expression to represent that? The more four Ooh, what? Four, plus four plus W. I'd probably go W plus four, so mm -hmm. that's just me. So four plus W were the exact same. I just think that it's all That's a four, not a one. Okay, that didn't help anything. <laughs> four. All right. So how do we find? Okay, so how do we find the dimensions of the table? Okay. Oh, okay. You need a bunch of things for this. Okay. Slow down. <laughs> Slow down. Okay. How do we find the area of a rectangle? Okay. So the area, because that's what I have, is length times width. Right? You guys are doing this? Okay. We know the area, that's a measurement of 45, the bunch of total still. We know the length, well, L we, doesn't exist, what exists? W plus 4. And we know our width is W. Hmm, have we seen this before? Yeah, yeah doesn't it feel like a math thing problem? <laughs> but this time the difference is I'm not asking you to find what the maximum area would be. I'm telling you the area is 40. Right? So it's a little bit different than a math min question, but the same sort of feel of it as well. So if I multiply that through, I got 45 equals w squared plus 4w. Okay. What do I need? Okay, what am I doing? I'm solving for w. I'm not solving for a mass area, so I'm not completely square. I'm not looking for the vertex. I'm not looking for a maximum. Maximum, minimum, deal with the vertex. I don't want the vertex. I want the x intercept. So I think this up into my y value has to be has to be zero. Zero. So I gotta bring that over. So I'm gonna have zero equals w squared plus four w minus forty-five. You guys get names today? Game over. Let's stay on that. All of you. All of you have names. Okay, what are the factors of negative 45 that add up to positive 4? Are you guys okay if I don't factor it the long way and just do that? Are you guys comfortable with that? Are you not comfortable with that? If you're not comfortable with it, then we'll do the complex way. Okay, so if you're comfortable with it, leave it here, don't copy down and I'll go top down. If you're not comfortable with it, follow me. So we've got W squared, we said plus 9W minus 5W minus 45. We're going to common factor those first two terms. So that's W, you know, I'm taking this one, that's W plus 9. And by the way, these two terms, I'm going to take out a negative 5. So I've got W plus 9. 
And everybody knows that this is body knows that negative five, right? Negative five is everything divided by negative five gives me a W. Negative 45 divided by the negative five gives me a positive nine. Like that's where the magical numbers are coming from. Uh, w plus nine. Okay, so W plus nine, and I'm left with W minus five. Okay, so now I'm going to solve because I have an equal zero. So it's indicating to me, the question is indicating to me that I have to solve. So I'm going to have W equals a negative nine, and W equals a positive five. Okay. True, I can't. You probably shouldn't be negative three feet in a width, right? Or negative nine feet in a width, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reject this answer. So I like to cancel it out. And sadly, ladies and gentlemen, harsh as it is, you have to say rejected or it's not valid. I Which is nine who? Feet. Okay. So here's the thing is I'm noticing sometimes the math is so cumbersome, or I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, so I'm just throwing numbers down to see if everything I got. If you can map on the page, it helps get some things right. Um, I do really need to see the answer. So pre-calc all about being precise, being attention to detail. So making sure that I have nicely set out the width and the length of this table is really important. Now some people went back and labeled it on the diagram. That's fine. Just make sure you have the unit of measure. Um, yeah. Anyway, just take a moment to do that because 